Hello there, my name is Tenorium, and welcome to Wingdaria Destiny. they are currently got a Kickstarter going on at the moment, so we're going to find out whether this game is worth pledging your money to. I was sent it, and apparently it's uh, inspired by old school Final Fantasy. It follows a blind boy's struggle against impossible odds to be with the one he loves. We don't know what it's like until we play it, do we? Let's click on that new game. Is that a deliberate Undertale reference? Eh, I guess determination is vague enough of a word. First of all, we are going to be looking quite heavily at the background. There's some very nice detail in here. There's some nice buildings down here, actually. Very nice. Uh, it looks like a decent amount of detail has gone into this. What can I say? The first thing I feel when I wake up in the morning is the rising sun with its heat warming my arms that lay on top of the bed sheets. I lay in full relaxation, only aware of the still silence in my room and the early birds flying past my window. My body feels almost weightless lying on this bed. It didn't take me long to get accustomed to its softness, right? It keeps pausing after like everything it does. Is there like an options menu? Right, hang on. Found it. Tech speed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that isn't always so high. Also, this is slightly difficult to find because it's there. That just looks like part of the UI. I had no idea it was there until I accidentally hovered over it. A bed, worthy of a person at a much higher rank than I. A bed, I'd never thought I'd even lay a hand on, yet I here I am. Almost unbelievable. I don't know why it does that. Even if it's been some time by now, and although I don't feel like I belong here, I don't want to believe. Truth be told, I've come to like this place quite a bit. Ironic, reminiscing how much I had despised it in the past. Were we some sort of poor kid who suddenly got swooped up into the Empire? Are we being touted to be evil? That's normally what this means. Now, this majestic building has a whole different meaning to me. And yes, let's face it, I've had luck on my side to make it this far, but... I know I can't stay in this place forever, at least not- <laughs> Why not? This sounds like the life, you never have to leave, it'll be beautiful. I just hope. I hope. Hope. The word lingers in my mind for a minute or two. Hope. I still have hope. Then, I begin to wonder what time it is. What? Why do you launch from that to- Time? You've gone from- Oh, hope. Hope is a grandiose word. Fuck, it's nine to five! Oh, it's- I'm, I'm up late, aren't I? <laughs> ah. Play for a little more, get up. We're full of determination. I figure I probably shouldn't keep lying here for too long, so I get up in order to get dressed. I find my way on my desk and sit down. I've spent so many mornings by this desk that it's hard to keep track of time by now. As I lean forward, putting my arms on the desk, I feel a hard object under my elbow. What could it be? I take it in my hand to examine it. It's a little flat metallic circle with engravings on both sides. It must be some sort of coin. An object I've never had the luxury to sp- <laughs> Did you sneak here? You don't know the way of coins. <laughs> Just for a moment, I wonder who left it there. Then the noises from afar caught my attention. We acquired a coin. Good? Hearing the faint sounds from Arkenwall, the capital down below, I'm sure the view from here is great. I bet I'd be able to look further and even across the wall that surrounds the city, but instead I start seeing pictures of things in my head that I know of. I think about the sun, the moon, the land, the ocean, the good, the... You can envision in your mind what good and evil is. Well done, good sir. All between the heaven and earth. But no matter what, my thoughts always end up drifting away. And then I think of her. Suddenly, I hear knocking from the door. Oh, you awake yet? Good, good. Okay, did you hear that voice acting? I mean, I don't want to condemn it, but it sounds like a lot of voice acting I've heard. Let's give it a go. What what sound is the voice? Oh, yeah, I forgot. Right click doesn't go into the menu because. Pfft. Is there a voice command menu? Uh, it is. Let's just whack that all the way up for the inevitable put down. Ever knew you were awake yet? Uh, answer. Yes. Okay, he sounds okay. Hopefully, we can actually hear what the woman's gonna sound like. I'm coming in then. 
Okay, by all means, do come in. It is her right here, her stepping through the door as her high heels. This time in the morning, high heels, you poor sod. High heels are hitting the marble floor. She closes the door and her s and the scent she carries with her reminds me of new fallen rain and rose petals. Her hand, soft as dove's feathers, grazes my shoulder as she takes a seat beside me. She bears an aura of kindness which is emitted through her wonderful v Yeah, okay, I get it, she's nice. <laughs> oh, come on, I get it, she's nice. <laughs> I, I heard, it's fine. She is the most beautiful being in the world, that I am sure of. Or you only know like four people. Have you been sitting here since daybreak? Yeah, she sounds quite generic. We'll be turning that off after what after we hear what we self sound like. Also, is that perspective or is she quite small? I can't tell how small she is. But I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt and say perspective and that she's not just just shoulders over the table height. I'm gonna say it's just bad perspective. Alright, come on. Our main character, what do you sound like? I guess I have. Time flies by fast. Eh, you sound alright. You don't sound too bad. Not as bad as some others. <laughs> we can't go trashing it on here, it's fine. Uh, voice test all the way down. Because uh, I'm sort of redundant if I'm just going to <laughs> let the, uh, the voices read for me. I guess I have. Time flies by fast. If you want to hear the voices, the demo link is in the description below. You can download it, I think. I don't know if I'm... A I must be able to share the link. It's a media file. Well, it's fine. You guys can click on it and play it. I remain in my spot without a hint of tension. Quite the opposite. I feel even more relaxed with her in my presence. Yeah, I think it definitely is perspective because we're tall, are we? I don't know. Let's just go with perspective, not that we're just dwarves. Did you have any dreams last night? No, not that I recall. We're very vacant. These faces do not look like they are the kind of faces which change expressions. Hmm. We're completely silent for a moment. For a whole moment, that must get awkward. The only thing you can hear are the birds flying outside the window singing their favourite melody. Oh sorry, favourite. It most certainly is a beautiful day. What are you watching, Evan? I feel her lean closer to me and I turn my head towards her with a sigh. Is she teasing me again? Don't ask like that, Arya. You know very well that I can't see anything! What a horrible thing to tease someone over! I forgot, we're blind! And she's just like, what are you looking at? Horrible! Alright. Ha! <laughs> I didn't mean with your eyes, Evan, with your heart! What do you see with your heart? Oh, what a... <laughs> oh, good. My heart? I've been blind for quite some time now and have been forced to completely... To complete rely. Uh, I'm going to presume that means completely. Rely on my hearing and tactile senses. By now I can mostly take care of myself, but I can't read body language, physical cues, or facial expressions. Well, I mean, place a hand on their face, you'd soon know. Talking about not judging a book by its cover, how could I? Instead, I try to sense the auras of the people I encounter. I'm not sure how it works, but their breathing usually tells a story. I wonder if that's what Arya meant. I mean, surely just the way they're talking is probably a good indication. You mean, because I can't see, I can sense? Yes, exactly! See with your heart, I tasted the words in my mouth, but a sadness inside of me gave the words a bitter taste. Hate, antipathy, and disapproval, for a long while... <laughs> that sounds like a setup to a joke. These were the only emotions I've sensed towards me, but Arya doesn't need to know any of this. Well... <sighs> No. Not even with my heart can I see anything. Don't say that, Evan. Try! A few minutes passed when I have my face turned toward her. Since I turned blind, Arya has been the only one who has shown me any form of compassion. I wonder why, when in fact we are so different. One thing is for sure, she is the only person left that I really care about, and suddenly it slips from my lips. I see you, Arya. Sure? Okay. I feel my heart as it starts pounding faster and the warmth that is spreading in my chest. That's normally called a heart attack. But what about Arya's reaction? I reach my hand out towards her face to feel for a smile or otherwise. She stops my hand halfway and holds its... I mean, it doesn't seem like the most romantic of jesters, but I don't know. Evan, I... 
Here, my hand, can you feel it? I'm slightly confused, but then I slowly examine her hand to find a little metallic object around her finger that was never there before. It's a ring. It is. There were no other ways of saying that, apparently. I I am engaged to the Prince of Neighbouring Kingdom, Prince Raymond of Rosenheim. So, as opposed to saying, hey, I'm engaged, we can't do this, you decide to make him cruelly find out for himself by touch. <laughs> you couldn't just say, hey, I I'm engaged. You reach out and make him touch your hand until he finds a ring. That's cruel. My heart comes to a stop and a feeling of defeat falls over me. Since when? Maybe this would be more impactful if we weren't, like, five minutes in. A week ago. And? Is this your decision? No, this is the will of my father. I let silence fill the room for two seconds. Do... Do you love him? <laughs> Prince Raymond is a kind person. But... Do you love him? Aria becomes silent for a while. She seems hesitant. Heaven... Father says it's in the best interest of Wingdaria. It will bring growth and prosperity back to our country. You still haven't answered my question. Do you think you can save Wingdaria? We're determined, remember. By marrying him? I honestly wouldn't know. I've never been taught about anything on this. <laughs> really? I mean, if we're in the era I think we are, isn't that the only thing you're brought up to do? And you didn't... whatever. She's still holding onto my hand, pressing them ever so slightly. Arya must be conflicted. I don't think she loves him, but I know she would have... have to marry on her father's command in order to save Wingdari and pass on the hair. The hair? No, the air. And truth be told, the kingdom really needs it if it's not too late already. But... there's so many ellipses. To marry without the slightest feeling of love seems unacceptable to me. Oh, uh, eh... Ever the romance. I immediately try to come up with a solution to this problem and quickly recall a thought that has been ticking my mind for the longest time. I grasp her hands. We look directly at her eyes, apparently. Arya, let's run away to... That is... <laughs> sure. Hi, we're looking for a princess who's clearly been well looked after and a blind person. There's got to be at least a million. Yeah, just just actually give up the search. This this could be impossible to find. Evan, you don't have to live here and neither do I. We can leave the kingdom and start our own life together, but we have to get out of the castle first. Evan, don't be silly. Arya's words pierce my heart like a poisoned arrow. Marrying someone you don't love is silly. No, saying stuff like that is silly. Are you scared? Aria. Aria hesitates for a few moments, but then opens her heart to me. I'm carrying a huge responsibility. The future of Wingdaria. Not to mention I've never lived outside of the castle. Of course I'd be afraid. I've spent most of my life outside these walls. Even being blind, I can tell you that it's not as scary as you may think. <laughs> Evan, people were throwing rocks at you. Really? My skin looks brilliant. I do not look like I've worked a day in my life. Ow, you hit a soft spot. Ha <laughs> ha. Suddenly changed our mood. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. So, what do you think? Well. <sighs> against impossible. Lindaria Destiny follows a blind boy's struggle against impossible odds to be with the one he loves. Right. <laughs> the choices he makes can mean life or death. Well, <laughs> I think we've just killed ourselves. But all too quickly, we are interrupted by someone at the door. Sir Evan. It is time! Oh, it is time already. It would seem so, I am sorry, Arya. No, it's alright. I believe we will have more time to talk later. I hope so, it seems like they have been keeping you very occupied lately. There is just a lot going on at the moment, but Evan, I don't want to make you late. You know my father really appreciates punctuality. Yes, you're right, I'll be on my way. And if I don't see you later, I wish you a wonderful day, Arya, and please think about what I said. Yes, I will. Arya and I reluctantly step away from each other, knowing we'll have to separate, but even so, we move towards my door. Okay, let's take a look at this background, shall we? Slightly less detailed than the one before. The the pattern on the the pattern on the floor changes between this guard and here. So there's squares here, but rectangles here. 
and towards the end it gets blurry. Eh, perspective, I guess. Other than that, it looks nice. I can't see any noticeable lines. Yeah, it looks quite nice. <clears throat> Princess Arya, Sir Evan, I am most certainly sorry for interrupting your meeting. Well, I don't think you are, but thanks for saying it anyway. It's all right, Sir Francis. How on earth can you tell who he is? They all must look the same if dressed like that. How is his visor staying up like that? Whatever. <laughs> we know you are just doing your job. I will we'll be on my way. Thank you for your notice, sir. Of course. I bow my head towards Arya, and then I hear her turn and leave along the long hallway of the castle. Nice walking. Oh, there's an emblem at the end of there. I presume that's a wing or a crest or whatever. Weirdly not blurry. <laughs> Her heels make the sound of elegant, confident steps, and I keep my head bowed for just a few more seconds while I can still smell her scent in the air. I wish I could accompany her and be a bigger part of her daily life, but alas, that is not my place. I then turn, bow at the guard at my door, and walk in the other direction along the hallway. Anyone seeing me for the first time would not assume me blind simply because of the confidence I can show on this path. Well, I mean, you've walked it like a bajillion times, of course you can. Yes, I haven't been living at the castle for all that long, but the echo from the walls have helped me learn their structure. With my honed hearing, finding my way has become less of a problem. I usually f have to feel my way around when I get to a new and unknown area, but I've walked this path a few times in the past and I still remember how it's laid out. Although walking this route never fills me with a pleasant feeling. Arya's father, the king. I wonder what he wants to discuss with me. It was on a short notice too, yesterday, around supper. I've only spoken with him a few times in the past, when I first arrived here a month ago, and again during the banquet Arya had invited me to. Both times he seemed very attentive, but also very clear about his opinions and ideas. Certainly a man of great calibre, but I guess that's the kind of person you have to be to rule a country. Well, I mean, you'd assume so. The king of a country who is active leader can't just sit back and be like, well... Oh, what's the problem? Something... Yeah, I don't care. Just just leave it, mate. Like, that's never gonna happen. As for what he wants from me, I have no idea, but staying away from an audience would not be wise. After all, I need to show respect if I want to be liked around here. But honestly, being the boy that got picked up from the streets, it's well needed. I find my way down a couple hallways and climb some stairs, all while I prepare myself for the conversation ahead. I don't stumble upon anyone as I make my way forward, but I hear steps and talking from someone in the distance. Because of my sharpened senses, I feel like I'm never truly alone, since I register almost everything that happens around me, even if it's from a bit far off. A bit far off, that's the technical term. I wouldn't say that it's as incredible as some might think, as I sometimes even hear things out of the other's awareness that maybe would have been better off unheard. Something that falls and shatters on the floor in inappropriate conversation, or maybe a scream in despair from somewhere afar. All things that I don't share with the people around me, as I don't want to cause turmoil or rumours. Misdeeds happen all over, but it is not my job nor place to bring these to awareness. I mean, why would it be? <laughs> You'd be thrown out of the castle. You'd always tell tale on someone more important than you. I turn around a corner and am immediately addressed by a guard. Sir Evan, the king is expecting you. I finally made it to the office of the king, and while I'm slightly nervous, I calmly walk over to the entrance. Are you ready to enter, sir? Yes, please let me in. Here we go. Okay, I think we conclude it's uh, not a perspective problem. It's the fact that I have gone from being slightly below the average height to a six foot giant, <laughs> if we're comparing ourselves to that bookcase. Background's very nice though. Detail has gone into this again. Some areas are mildly smudged, but some have massive detail put in them, like the carpet. The glasses as well. Looks very nice. A couple of big doors are being pushed aside and the smell of paper and wooden furniture meets my senses. I don't have a clear picture of this room in my head since I never had the chance to fully explore it. I've only ever been here in the presence of the king and waltzing around in curiosity, touching up on everything that would most likely be considered rude. <laughs> I mean, it's the King's Chambers. You don't want to stumble into anything, you know. God, is this, it's like a, well, I mean, it's, it, it's round, it's cylindrical, it feels, I mean, mildly squidgy. King, why do you have so many candles in here? This one's double-ended. Like, oh, you don't want to be finding those things. 
I've only entered, taken a seat, and left as soon as the conversation was over, which I also intend to do this time. After all, this is the royal office of the king himself, King Terrawin. I'm sensing how he's sitting at the end of his desk, hearing him and how he's writing away, almost lost in his work. I stand at the door opening, waiting for approval to enter, and like the last time I was here, I only linger for a few moments before he addresses me. <laughs> moments. Oh my lord. Sir Evan, my lord, take a seat. I enter the office and hear how the door behind me is getting closed by the guards outside. I find my way over to the table and make a brief stop. I'm remembering how I sat in a chair during my last visit, so I reach out and to my joy, I find it again and immediately sit down. You're a king. You look quite young. <laughs> Well, I mean, at least you look mildly rugged. Your skin isn't completely perfect. That's a start. I mean, your nose looks like it's been broken once or twice as well, which would suggest battle or something. My god, it's an old character who looks old. Slightly. It's, it's a 30 year old who actually looks like he could be 30, like late 30s as well. Still remembering where the chair is, I see. Yes, my lord. A short moment passes where we're both completely silent. Then I hear the king removing the papers off of his desk, finding a new one and dipping his quill in assumingly a small container of ink. Oh god, it could just be blood. He's crazy and we have no way of knowing. It makes me wonder, as this is the first time I'm experiencing this, apparently he needs to write something down. I'm glad you could come on such short notice. I mean... Wait, where, what do you think I have to do with my... Whatever. There is currently not much for me to do here, my lord. Ah, oh, I wouldn't have said that. Finding time was easier than finding my way to the garden grounds. Yes, of course. The king turns silent again while he scribbles something down. It makes me nervous. Did I say too much or maybe too little? I wish Arya could have prepared me for this. But then again, she didn't even know of this appointment when I first told her about it. In fact, she seemed quite surprised that the king would want to speak to me in private. And I'm not going to lie, I was quite surprised myself. Maybe I should just ask. It's the king. We're feeling determined. We also like feeling our head on our shoulders. On second thoughts, I shouldn't speak unless he asks me to. He's a calculated man. Besides, it seems like he's scribbling something down. I should probably just wait until he's ready. Then, sooner than I expected, I hear the king leaning backwards in his chair and releasing a sigh. My only guess is that the paperwork is really exhausting. <laughs> That's definitely it. I can hardly make any other assumptions about a man whom I've never really spent any time with. Well, Sir Evan, now that we're on the subject, what do you see yourself doing here at the castle? The question catches me by surprise. I honestly haven't put any thought into it. Arya was the one who took me in, knowing that I was disabled and probably just a burden. I never thought about how I could be of use to anyone here. Anyone except Arya. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, you're taken in to live a life of luxury, and you honestly thought of just spitting in all of their faces and running away. <laughs> what a horrible person. Princess Arya might have a plan for me. Let's do that. Took me in, so I assume she might have a plan for me. A plan, you say. The king becomes silent once again. This confirms my thoughts of him and his very attentive way of thinking, always analysing and carefully progressing into an understanding. My daughter has many plans indeed, but none that concern you. His words hit me with a bit of shock. As much as I'd like to believe otherwise, there is truth to what he said. Of course there is! Arya is a princess and I a mere commoner. What was a princess doing wandering outside the gates of the city? What business could she have with me? But still, I find it odd that she'd bring me to the castle for no reason at all. Come to think of it, I'd never questioned her about it. I was probably too caught up by the happiness that Arya had given me from just bringing me here and spending time with me. Well, I think that would be one of the first things you asked, wouldn't it? I guess I assumed she'd be bringing me for some kind of task sooner or later, but now that seems out of the question. You have to understand, young Evan, that we have little use of you here at the castle. I can imagine so, my lord. I'm honestly not surprised by the outcome of our conversation. Arya brought me here, filling the room with an unimportant guest. If anything, I've only been a burden to the king and his court, yet it pains me that I'm unneeded. Although... The king pauses for a few moments. He says, although, and pauses... Until, like, okay, so. In two minutes from now, I will I will schedule how long two minutes are, right? That's how, that's how ridiculous it is. My daughter would be very sad to see you leave. It becomes clear to me that she's taken a liking to you. A warmth suddenly spreads in my chest, but as much as the words of the king make me happy, they also scare me. Yeah, there's a back entrance, fucking leaf through it. She's to marry. They've noticed that she cares about me, but just how much they've noticed remains a question. We have been spending quite some time together, and she t since she took me in, I won't deny that, my lord. 
Yes, but once she marries, she will become quite busy. Is this something you've taken into consideration? Yes, of course. <laughs> of course I have. I'm running away with her. So... Ugh. The warmth that was still in my chest turns to complete concern, and I take a long, deep breath to remain calm while I try to construct my response. She has informed you of her engagement, has she not? Y yes, she has, my lord. So you know very well. What will you do once she becomes absent? Don't look struck and solemn. Jesus Christ! I am quite uncertain, my lord. Unfortunately, I am unable to find any fitting task for you at the moment. Do you understand what this means, Sir Evan? I realise that this is probably equivalent to disapproval. The king probably intends to send me back to the street as soon as Arya gets married away. But his reasons seem valid enough, and Arya and I would always be ways apart. It would be pointless to stay. My time at the castle is slowly coming to an end, so I bow my head towards the king and try to speak with the utmost precision. His Excellency made the decision to send me back to the city of Arkenwall. It is completely reasonable and I bear no ill will, however I would like to stay until the Princess Arya is wedded. I want to wish her the best into her new life. Very well, I grant you your wish. However, the wedding won't be until next month. I would like you to keep yourself occupied during that time, as Arya will be having more important tasks to deal with. He, he was just okay with us wasting resources, and it's been two minutes now. That's how long the silence was. God, that must be uncomfortable. I nod my head in approval and await the wish of the king as he scribbles something down on his paper. Please make your way to the training hall this afternoon. Sotlan Gry will be there to train you in sword fighting. I will inform him that the training will continue at regular intervals until the end of the month. The request surprises me since the king very well knows of my disability. <laughs> of course he does. Like, he, he noticed the chair thing. Like, uh, I understand that he wants to keep me busy during the wait, but with an activity where seeing is highly critical raises a few questions in my head. Sword fighting with Captain Gry, my lord? Do not fret. The captain will not harm you. It is simply to keep you active and fit while you are still here. If that is what my king wishes, I will not decline. The king is silent for a few seconds, then he moves in his chair and releases a sigh. Sir Evan, you have a good heart. It will certainly pain me to see you go. There's probably things we could do, but whatever. You have been too much too kind, my lord. I will spread the word of your generosity in the time ahead. Then maybe it's so. Farewell, Evan Aidney. King Terowin. Both of us rise at the same time, and I once bow. I once again bow my head deeply to show my gratitude. Then I calmly move away from the chair and back towards the doors where I entered. As I reach them, I knock twice and they open before me, letting me roam the halls of the castle once more. As the doors to the office are being closed behind me by the guards nearby, I still stand for a second. Just to take a deep breath, knowing that I won't be here for much longer is a bit shocking, but then again, Arya was my only reason for actually wanting to stay. Is it that shocking though? You should probably be aware. <laughs> you should probably know if we're being picky. If she decides to take a different path in life, then I should probably do the same. But what if she takes the same path as I? What if... That's right, I still have hope. Hope! <laughs> What's the time? <laughs> uh, that maybe we will decide the same destiny. A destiny where we can be together. You hero? I guess? Is that the end of the demo? No, it's not. How's this place looking? Yeah, it's looking alright. This bit's drawn a bit weirdly, and around here it gets... It gets blurry again. Why make it blurry if you're just going to put the emblem there, which is completely seeable? Yeah. It's a bit past noon and I've just been escorted to the castle's training area to practice my sword skills with the captain of the Royal Guard. Knowing that I'll stay here for another month, it undoubtedly isn't bad with the sort of activity to keep myself occupied but the idea of training a blind man in sword fighting still seems odd to me. My sense of hearing might be sharp, but surely I'm no match for a man with his sight intact. And certainly not a captain, a man who was basically born with a sword in his hand. Well, it's no use wondering. Maybe I can ask the captain himself about his thoughts on the matter when he shows up. This is it, Sir Evan. Will you be able to find the way back to your room after the training has finished? No, but <laughs> we can all dream. Yes, I believe so. If not, I will find someone and ask for directions. A sword is being placed on my palm by the guard. I wear it in my hand and let the finger slowly run across the blade to determine its size. It's at a normal length, but a bit heavier than you'd expect. Very well, Captain Gry will arrive shortly, I believe. You should just wait here for him. <laughs> this is going to go poorly. 
Okay, so he's either going to be really, really kind-hearted, or he's going to be scum and thinks that we're an idiot. He's got to be one of the two. I will thank you very much for your guidance. Certainly, Sir Evan. Good luck with your training. I hear the guard leave behind me as I slowly step further into the training hall, as I hear the echo of my footsteps resound. I've only been here once, there simply hasn't been a reason for me to come here. Until now. I swing the sword in my hand once before me. Ask the next time, in case someone's just sort of walking around slowly. <laughs> you may have accidentally just chopped someone's head off. The sound of its blade cutting through the air seems to surge through my body, a feeling of status and power. It's been a while since I felt like this, and a couple of memories find their way into my conscience. I reminisce the time when I wasn't as crippled as I am now. Then a couple of footsteps enter the hall and a light chuckle follows. It can only be one person. Evan Aldney. I see you already found yourself a nice sword. Yeah, okay, so he's a dickhead. Cool. He had to be one of the two. He was never going to be anything else. I turn myself at the voice of the captain as he steps closer. Sodlan Gry. A guard gave it to me, although I am confused as to why this is the activity that has been chosen for me. Training a bored blind man in sword fighting? <laughs> I wouldn't know. I don't even know why you were led in here in the first place. I'm really just following orders. From Sotland's voice, it's obvious that he's a person of high status. I mean, he's got a scar reaching down his eye. Ugh. But often, his status and method of speech makes him feel condescending towards others. It's no wonder the guards fear him. Very well, but please go easy on me. I draw my sword towards Sodland's voice. Suddenly, I feel a heavy weight on my shoulder as Sodland clashes his sword into mine. Ah! Oh, you weren't prepared for that, I am. I'm so sorry. With all due respect, don't be too hard on me. Don't forget that I can't see you, Captain Gry. Yes, you are right. Because you only have your eyes on Princess Arya, don't you? I... <laughs> Is he marrying? She's not marrying Sodlan, is she? Why should he give a fuck? The sound of Arya's name from Sodlan's mouth rushes through me and I quickly turn towards him without saying a word. Yes, I've seen you with the princess, we all have. I suddenly feel the tip of Sodlan's blade at my throat, my heart skips a beat. What are you trying to accomplish, you disabled goat? Goat? I don't even call Billy. I don't even. S Whatever. You're nothing but a boy under a king's orders and a blind one at that. If the princess weren't so stupid to have picked you up where she did, and you never would have set foot in this place. I swing my sword towards him, but in vain as he quickly moves out of my reach. What's your tongue? You wouldn't want to lose it now, would you? We're saying that to him. Hmm. Look at you. Presumptuous, are we not? My hatred for him grows like never before as I listen to his condescending laughter. Why is he mocking me? Is it to awaken some kind of urge in me to fight? Maybe this is more than just a training session. Maybe it's kind of a game. Uh, maybe he wants me to play along. He'll be saying that anymore once we're done here. Do so you think you have the strength to defeat me? This is so dumb. How amusing! You're blind, Evan. Whatever you try will be in vain. I quickly rub my nose with my free hand while I ready my stance. He'll probably attack me again at any moment. But to what degree? Does he seriously intend to hurt me? No, he can't. Surely you know of Princess Arya's marriage. I can't imagine how much that enrages you. But you have to understand, Evan. You are and will always remain the lowest. I mean, he sort of has a point. Don't, don't take him on. As my blood begins to boil like magma, the thought of this session simply being a game crumples around me. I take a hard grip on my sword. Good, good. So you're trying intent to kill... Mm-hmm. Good, good. You don't know anything about me. Oh, yes, I do. And I'm afraid the princess would never choose someone like you, not even for love. And you know why, Evan? Because you are weak and naive. You would never be capable of giving a princess what she needs. You are blinded, Evan. Blinded by a stupid, unattainable love. You know what? For someone who's really angry at us, he sure has good diction, doesn't he? I listen closely to Sodland slowly walk towards me, and still I stand, trying to contain my ever-growing anger and hatred towards him. Well, shit. That's what you get for fucking <laughs> chatting shit to a fucking captain of a guard. How dumb could you be? <sighs> but that feeling quickly turns to pain as Sodland swiftly steps forward and his blade flies through the air, leaving a cut on my upper part of my dominant arm. I drop my sword and its metallic noise resounds in the training area. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, captain Gry! I can feel my warm blood running down from the wound Sodland left on my body. 
I also hear Sodman laughing with no concern of my injury whatsoever. Yeah, funny that. I'm infuriated just as much as I'm confused. It's become quite obvious that Arya and I share some feelings that show a bit more than friendship and that more than just is aware about it. But so what? Is the captain going to kill me for just that, or this is maybe a way to test my loyalty? Loyalty towards Sodland? Loyalty towards the wish of King Terrawin? My sword landed on the floor at my arm's length and is reachable. I can strike back? Strike him down? Or shall I give him the benefit of the doubt? Do I even have time to hesitate, or will he kill me with his next move? What do I do? You incompetent fool. I don't know. I'll tell you what, we'll attack Sodlin and see what happens. There is nothing that can go wrong with this, and it's probably going to end up with us dying. From here on, your choices will have a heavy impact on the story. The rest is up to you. I presume that's the end of the demo then. Judging by the way that's appearing. Is it? Be nice if the transition ended. It is indeed. Well, it looks promising. Is it something I'd go out of my way to play? Probably not. Does it look good? Yes, it does. I'm not sad that I played it. It looked good, honestly. Surprisingly good. I think they're asking for like 70,000 kroner or something, which is like in real money, like $7,000, $8,000. It's like one, oh no, it's, it's like $9,000 or something. It's like one in every eight or one in every nine or something. Whew. But that was amusing. I'll probably go back and play it once it's actually out. My name's been Tanarim. Thank you very much for watching. Links are in the description below. I'll see you next time.